Katie Hutner, and today I'll be speaking with Professor Mark Jacobson, a Stanford Woods Fellow at Stanford University. And he works on a project called the Solutions Project, which is a 50-state plan to solve our climate and energy problems in a renewable way that won't hurt our planet, that will help us solve the issues that we're facing. So we're very excited to have Mark on. Mark, welcome. Well, thank you for having me on the show, Heidi. Oh, well, you're welcome. So I'm really eager to hear about the Solutions Project. And if you could tell us what it is and how it works, I'd be thrilled. Well, the Solutions Project, it's a nonprofit that combines science and business and culture to try to uh, take science-based plans that we've been developing here at Stanford University and elsewhere and try to educate the public and policymakers about these plans in order uh, for them to be ultimately implemented. And so it really combines, I mean, it was founded by myself and uh, Mark Ruffalo, who's an actor and activist, uh, Josh Fox, who uh, directs films, documentaries, uh, Marco Kraples, who is a business person and is also now working in solar. But it also has engaged uh, many other people since then uh, to try to really bring out these science-based plans to the public. And so it's not, not an activist group, like because there are so many others, but it's really a public engagement group. So it's about bringing the science to the public. Correct. And, and policymakers as well, uh, really, to try, because the problem is, you know, when we do science, very few people uh, read about it right. and it doesn't go very far. But, you know, if you actually work together as a group uh, with people who are in different areas, uh, in this case, in business and culture and you know, arts and entertainment, for example, uh, then it's a lot uh, easier. You get a lot greater reach of getting information out that's important for people to consider. We're not saying that's the only answer, but it's something for people to consider as a way forward, in particular for solving uh, climate and air pollution problems, which is what we're looking at. So what are your solutions? What's the plan? Well, our plans, we've developed plans for individual states and countries, uh, all 50 states and 139 countries so far. And the idea is to transform the energy infrastructure of each state and country to entirely, uh, well, we first electrify everything and then provide all the electricity from 100% wind, water, and solar power for all purposes. So all purposes means electricity, transportation, heating and cooling, industry, agriculture, forestry, fishing. And the generators that we're considering are uh, onshore and offshore wind, photovoltaic, solar photovoltaics on rooftops and in power plants concentrated solar power in power plants, mostly in deserts, existing hydroelectric power. So we're not planning to grow, increase the number of uh, reservoirs for conventional hydroelectric power. And a tiny amount of tidal wave power and then some geothermal power. And we'd have to combine this with some low cost storage for heat and cold, including like just water, rocks, and, uh, and ice. And then also for electricity, including the existing hydroelectric power, uh, existing plus some proposed uh, pumped hydroelectric storage, and uh, concentrated solar power with storage. Does this include nuclear? Uh, no, our plans are nuclear free. They don't include either nuclear power or biofuels, uh, conventional biofuels such as for transportation or electric power. So we're trying to do every, we're trying to eliminate four to seven million air pollution deaths per year that occur worldwide and about 62,000 in the United States per year. And so we have to eliminate combustion. So we want to eliminate burning things. And that's why a lot of biofuels are not included. And we don't use nuclear because although it has some advantages over conventional fuels, uh, it has several disadvantages, including not only nuclear waste, which has to be stored for several hundred thousand years, uh, but also nuclear weapons proliferation problems, which the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change uh, says is a, is a serious concern. And in fact, five countries of the world have secretly developed weapons under the guise of civilian nuclear energy programs. So we don't want to expand nuclear to many countries that don't have it right now. Nuclear meltdown risk, one and a half percent of all nuclear reactors ever built to date have melted down to some degree. Uh, there's also the cost. The cost of nuclear and the time lag between planning and operations are very prohibitive. It takes between 10 and 19 years to plan, permit, and construct a nuclear power plant versus two to five years for wind or solar. So if we want to solve problems quickly, we can't use new nuclear. We have to go to clean renewable energy that can be implemented much faster. 
and the cost right now is about three to four times higher than onshore wind power in the United States uh, for nuclear and about twice the cost of utility scale photovoltaics. Uh, so these are reasons we don't use that, those two technologies right now. And are, are, how are politicians responding to this plan? So far, it's been very positive. In the states of California and New York, uh, both states have adopted about 62% of our 2030 goals. Our goals were to go 80% wind, water, solar for all sectors by 2030 in these states. And both states have adopted essentially 50% by 2030 goals. And the federal government, well, nothing has happened so far, but there is a House Resolution 540, HR House Resolution 540, which has the goal uh, based on um, our plans to go to the, for the United States to go to 100% uh, clean renewable energy by 2050, and it has like 34, 35 co-sponsors so far. And both presidential candidates on the Democratic side remaining uh, have adopted our 100% by 2050 goals of clean renewable energy. Can we wait till 2050? Uh, no, we can't wait to 2050. So our plans are. Well, it's 100% by 2050, but really 80% by 2030, which is extremely aggressive. And the reason we don't do 100% by 2030 is there are some uh, areas of energy, including uh, aircraft, uh, passenger aircraft, and, and long-distance ships, for example, that will take longer to uh, get that infrastructure implemented. But you know, most things like your electric cars are here, clean renewable generators are here, so we can start transitioning, well, all sectors uh, but we'll have some components of, of some of the sectors that will take a little bit longer. So that's why we have some wiggle room to 2050. Do you give any advice to individuals? I mean, I know there's the, the piece here, which is it's really important that we get policies in place in a large scale way. But in terms of individual citizens and they want to think about what they can do, do you, do you have specific advice about that? Uh, yes, everybody uh, can, can participate, um, not only through uh, commuting, reducing commuting, by using public transportation more, biking more, but in your own home, uh, weatherizing your home can reduce energy loss significantly. And part of it, I mean, we look at, can we power the existing and future energy infrastructure with wind, water, and solar? But that future infrastructure can, you can have less demand if people use less energy. So right. one way is to save energy by uh, preventing losses of energy through your homes, uh, putting LED light bulbs instead of incandescent or complex fluorescent light bulbs. Uh, using energy efficient appliances, putting solar on your rooftop to generate your own some of your own energy, using an electric car which uses one fourth to one fifth the energy as a gasoline car, or diesel car, and also eliminates air pollution from the tailpipe. Uh, these are all things that people can do. Appliances. I mean, every new appliance you can re exchange your gas uh, heaters for air source heat pump heaters. Same thing with get, uh, gas water heaters. Can be you can have an air source heat pump water heater. Instead of a gas stove, you can use a, an induction cooktop stove, which works uh, just as well, burns just as well. Uh, so, in fact, it's it's really straightforward for every person to eliminate all fossil fuel use in their own home uh, with wind, water, solar, and you replace it with wind, water, solar technologies uh, by eliminating the gas that comes. I mean, gas is used mostly for for water heating, air heating, and stoves. So those can all be eliminated, and then you have gasoline or diesel in your car, that can be exchanged with an electric car. And then, so you can really become clean in your own home and then start generating your own power with solar on your roof or if you have a reasonable wind in your backyard, small wind turbine in your backyard. Um, so these are things individuals can do. And so do you have this on your website? Is there, you know, on the Solutions Project, what people can do as individuals? Well, on the Solutions Project website, there, there are maps right now of each state and each country that where we've developed a clean and renewable energy plan. Uh, right now, it's not so obvious where the information about uh, what individuals can do, but there are in the papers that we've developed, there is a section that talks about uh, what individuals can do. And so that's definitely one thing we have to make more prominent and easily accessible. To yeah, I'd, lo I'd love to be able to make that accessible to, to people I know and it's my students and people who come from my website to your website. So. Yeah, so I'll look at your papers and try to add it myself and, and you know, maybe it's something, it's something to work towards because, you know, a lot of people feel, you know, what I notice in talking to friends of mine and this whole sort of waking up process, which I feel is my, my kind of calling is to alert people, teach people, um, is to say, okay, what can you do? 
because people hear a lecture and they hear how bad things are, but they, they want to know if there's a solution and what, beyond this sort of general bigger plan of working with lawyers and policy and big environmental groups as individuals, how they can participate. And I think that's important. Yeah, it definitely is. And so if I were to simplify it into three messages for homeowners, it would be electrify everything in your home, uh, reduce loss by and reduce the energy use by shutting off lights, uh, exactly. weatherize the home, more insulation, and then power as much as you, of your home as you can with your own energy, including uh, solar and, in some cases, uh, backyard wind. You know, there's simple things. In my home, I don't need the, the boiler on all day long to warm up hot water. The way it's designed is it just kind of comes on when it wants to, I guess. Right. And it's not being used most of the time. I mean, I wish the new designs were more sort of, you could moderate them. I use it at night or I take a shower in the morning, but I don't need it all day. So I, I manually turn it off. But there's lots of things like that. People can really make a huge difference and it saves you money to do it. I mean, yeah. my, my oil bills are less. Yeah, in fact, there's recirculation pumps um, with a timer. I mean, so yeah, a lot of, there's a lot of heat loss through hot water heaters where there's a recirculation pump that's continuously on. But if you put a timer on it, so it's only re recirculating hot water at certain times a day, you'd be amazed at how much energy that saves. I know, and I'm, I'm not quite sure why we don't have that in place. It would save people a lot of money, and it would help the planet. Yeah, for I, mean, sure. I don't know if the answer's about that, but that seems to me something that engineers and designers should be working on is really just this, the basics of a, a, of a boiler, you know, that sort of thing, or lights coming off and on automatically in a home and you know all these all these issues about uh, electricity being pulled from plugs and products that we're not using toasters that are plugged in and that sort of thing yeah there's a lot of work is going into making homes kind of smart or smart right. grid technology to make it uh, more energy efficient you know in some cases the, the utility can actually control or at least give you information about what energy you're using there are all sorts of meters you can now install uh, that allow you to see what exactly what appliances or how much each appliance is using at, at a given time, and this is one way to see if you've left something on or not. That's great. But the world is going into a more uh, an efficient way of checking and controlling energy use in homes. That's wonderful. Well, your your work is just phenomenal. I recommend that everyone go look, go look at the Solutions Project. And I also suggest that people call on their politicians to draw on this research. It's vital and it's here, it's ready to go. Mark shows us that it's very doable and we can get there a huge way by 2030 and it looks like completely by 2050. Yeah, we, we definitely think it's technically and economically possible to do this transition in this time period. Uh, there are social and political barriers, but there's also the barrier of just getting information out to large exactly. numbers of people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's key. I mean, I, I, I know about your work and I tell other people, I, I don't know about that. I want to know. So it's how, how do we get it out there, which is why you're on here today, because I think it's it's vital. And yeah, I think it's you're... also really interesting that big media figures, uh, movie stars, uh, film directors are taking this on and wanting to share this message. And that really helps. Oh, definitely. It's been amazing uh, working with uh, all sorts of great people who uh, not only have their they're respected in, in their communities and they have the, have the ability to get information out to large numbers of people, something that I have no ability to do. So I'm just, I just like focus on getting the work done and trying to get information out. But, you know, I just, you know, there's just a limited amount of exposure that scientists have to right. provide information. Well, and also not everyone's equipped to read what you're writing. They're not, you know, that's not their field. So it's really helpful to have someone disseminate it, make it clear for the general public and get it out True. to them. Yeah. I mean, part of our job should be, to, and is, to try to make things simple, but, you know, even simplifying, it's it's not necessarily what a lot of people are interested in reading about. It's, so it has to be, it has to be uh, said in an in interesting way to people to make it so it's engaging. And, I mean, if you're trying to do it on a large scale. Right, it right. People. Right, it has to be, and that's messaging. That's what it's all about. So. I do think you guys have done a great job of messaging, and I think your message is vital. So I want to thank Mark for coming on our show. He's a phenomenal, phenomenal professor working on the issues of energy, climate change, reducing our waste, and he really has a clear path. When people say, oh, we can't do it with renewables, well, Mark shows us that we absolutely can. I recommend that everyone go to the solutionsproject.org. It's org, right? 
Yeah, yes, right. yeah. Uh, solutionsproject.org. It's an amazing site. It shows you state by state the way forward to get us off of fossil fuels, to get us off of biofuels and nuclear, and to go to cleaner, safer plan that really is our, our future. And we need it. We need it right away. Climate change is here. It's happening. All of our speakers that I've been talking to, we've heard Catherine Hayhoe, Carl Safina, Pat Wright. Everyone is talking about climate change. And everyone is really, really worried. We had the hottest year ever in 2015. We just hit the, the two mark on Celsius. I mean, we're really, the other day, right? We, that was very bad news. We're seeing the ice caps melting. It's just, it's not good. But the idea is to take action. So you as individuals, you should reduce your use whenever you can. And you should learn everything you can about how you can change your habits if you don't have a home. These issues, not all of them are usable, but much of it is walking, bicycling, electric cars, taking public transportation, not being wasteful, many, many things. So thank you so much, Mark. We're really grateful to have you on. That's it. Thanks. On HeidiHutner.com, you can see this and many more of our videos, and you'll be able to read up on Mark and go to his links. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.